welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new to my site, I am a card maker. I have been for many years now um, and it became my passion about 10 years ago. Luckily, um, over the last three years, I have been invited to join a few design teams. So on my channel, you will see a lot of the samples that I make and an introduction to many of the new products that are coming to the market. I always try and include a few card ideas and where possible some instructions on how to make some of the projects yourself. So do check out my other videos. If you have followed my channel for this year, and craft consortium across social media for several years you will know that they had a partnership with a young lady called Katie Hackney and Tell the Bees was one of the first illustrated collections that they put together and this is where my love of craft consortium began so there you go there's the original collection and can you believe it, they have now brought out this 2021 special edition. I want to quickly show you that this collection was the first one that I bought from Craft Consortium. And I found the card that many of you will probably see across social media that I posted on Instagram. And this was spotted by the team at Craft Consortium uh, four years ago it is now because I wrote the date in there. This is a, an album of special cards that remind me of my crafting journey. And this is on Pinterest and on Instagram and on the Craft Consortium website. And this is where my love of their papers began. And four years later on, I'm now on their design team. So never give up on your dreams. But very, very quickly, this is the original Tell the Bees papers. And I know many of you will love this collection just as much as I do. This is my Keep One pad. I actually bought three of them in total. Two of them I've used. And this final one here I keep as my coffee table book. I just absolutely adore it. So I'll give you a quick overview of the products that you're going to see in this stunning collection. It is in a navy blue, almost black and gold colour combination. And you will still find the fabulous washi tape, the collection of the stamps... The beautiful pearl embellishments, my favourite, the sequins in an amazing colour range and some stunning golden bees cover. I think this section here on the front cover designed by Katie Hackney is a masterpiece in itself. It's just incredible and I love it just as much now as I did four years ago. So yes, you can cut out these embellishments but let's move on to these incredible papers i'm going to zoom in the camera just a little bit so it's completely full so you can see just how stunning they are this is like a burnt gold and then you have creams and pale lemons and greens and the bees themselves this has a matte finish to it and I just love this combination as well in this pearlescent finish can you see so I dip between it being a black a very deep chocolate brown and a navy blue I think the background is going to look different on the compared to the embellishments that you use but I just think it's incredible I absolutely love it we then got the cow parsley this is more of a matte paper I would say probably then that this is your pearlescent that has got a slight sheen to it but this one is definitely matte 
and again you've got these golden browns pale creams it's so subtle and the imagery is just incredible i'm so looking forward to working with it then we go back to the flowers they look a little bit like scabious i'm not entirely sure but again these are going to make incredible backing papers you can also use them to make dl envelopes which is another one of my passions at the moment these papers are always such fantastic quality they're great for projects for your card making for your scrapbooking i just think they're divine when you rub your hand over these ones these bees are slightly um raised they're embossed and they have a slight sheen on them i'll bring it up to the camera and then hopefully there you go you can see the sheen this page here is more subtle greys which again is very uh, popular at the moment we have more of the bees there's the queen bee herself and then these stunning, stunning wreaths. My mind is now whirring as to what I can do with this collection. So this collection is coming out at the beginning of February. And I believe it's a launch in on Create and Craft TV in the middle of February. So you'll have to keep an eye out across my social media for updates. And hopefully by then I will have made a few cards. We've got Honeysuckle here. I do like this darker background. I think it really lifts the illustrations. You can see why it's a special edition. I think I'll be buying two or three of this one as well. I could see me having this as a coffee table book. You'll have to let me know in the comments if you buy two of things so that you can keep one and play with one. Love this. Beautiful daisies. You can't beat daisies. When you first look at them, you think the imagery is really simple, but the quality of the illustrations is so good that you end up looking further into the design. You've got more embellished um, bleen on this one, so you've got more gloss on there. Oh, look. Oh, my goodness. That's embossed. It's metallic, it's embossed. This one is also raised, so this must be embossed as well. Oh, that's incredible. You've got shades of gold and yellow and cream and brown. And then this luxurious black, that's definitely black, with a golden honeycomb on it. Oh, you just want to touch it. Incredible, just incredible. Well done, Craft Consortium. Then we've got a more subtle wheat sheaf. Do you do this? Do you touch the papers? Just such brilliant quality. And as always, everything mixes and matches. So let's do our little trick. There we go. Look at these, how these all match, how you can mix and match all of these different designs. And then all the way back, look, You've got the honeycomb and then you've got that pearlized paper that we saw right at the beginning. And then you've got those greys and those yellows, which I do think are the Pantone colours this year. So they've, uh, they're completely on trend with their colour colourways. And there we go. And then one final back page with some more toppers that you can cut out. And then here is the talented Katie Hackney. It's been a little while since we've had some collections from her, but I, for one, think this is outstanding. So there's our paper pad. Let's have a look at the embellishments, shall we? Let's begin by taking a look at the stamps again. Always excellent quality on, on this particular set. You've got some honeycomb, we've got the beehive, the cow parsley, those beautiful marguerite daisies and the bees themselves. 
they'll be great to work with but I also want to draw your eye to this is the backing for the stamps and you can use these to give you a clue as to how to colour them and if you're really brave you could cut this out and use it as part of a DL card we then have the enamel dots and these are flat backed and sticky so they're easy to add to your projects there are 80 in every kit and in this particular one you've got a range of honey gold pale creams peaches and almost a bronze color but i love collecting these i buy double of these as well because i think they're some of the best enamel dots on the market we then have eight golden embellishments of these honeybees now can you see the detail in those just incredible i also love sequins and i do believe that the first tell the bees collection was my first foray into the world of sequins so it's probably four years since i've been adding those three or five little sparkles to my projects and now it's become a little bit of a trademark for me but can you see the colours that are incorporated in that little set the colours are incredible you've got pale blues you've got an electric blue really classy pearl and gold everything matches beautifully love those particularly those electric blue ones And another popular product are the washi tape. So again, it's special edition. So you've got two rolls and these are the designs of them. So they're going to coordinate with the papers. These are becoming increasingly popular for people who journal and for adding a little bit of texture to your cards. So there we have it. We've got our washi tape. We've got our sequins, you've got these fantastic golden bees, you've got the pearl dots and you've got some stamps. There may be more stamps but we'll have to wait until launch to uh, see if that's the, the case. So I'm going to now go and make some samples and I'll be back to share them with you soon. I had a great day making cards using this beautiful collection and the first card that I made was reminiscent of the one that I showed you earlier which was the first card I used using the original Queen Bee. So we've got the nine hexagons and I laid them out, die cut them from the various bits of paper and then I used a range of die cuts and sentiments that I seem to have acquired in the last four years all relating to bees and honeycomb and hives so pull all of those out and you'll find that they work really well with the Tell the Bees special edition. My second card is this one here and I've incorporated hexagons and octagons in a lot of these designs to reflect the shape of the honeycomb so if I bring this one up slightly this is a honeycomb embossing folder and I've also used a strip of die cut honeycomb just to add a little bit of texture but I really loved this background paint so for this particular card which again can be male or female I use the Dynamics uh, cutting die which is the Deco Square and all of these you can use as separate dies you can see there it's a very very useful die to have and it's part of Craft Consortium's die cutting range and here I die cut in black glitter card and I took two of the sheets of paper the bees and this stunning background wreath and die cut into it so that the queen 
on the paper was the central point of my card. Then I've added another golden bee embellishment onto a piece of ribbon and used the golden enamel dots. And I think that works really well for a mail card with the craft paper there. My next card is a little bit of a unique shape and I've got a die with this triangular feature so I made use of it by cutting around it to make the base of the card and then I took some golden yellow and matted the honeycomb paper onto it. I then added some texture by adding the washi tape and another piece of the honeycomb die that I've got and then these are actually toppers from the original Queen Bee collection, Tell the Bee collection so don't be afraid to mix and match what you have already there are hints of pale yellow and grey in the Tell the Bees special edition collection and this is the colour palette that I have stuck with for this particular card. I've used another Dynamics cutting die and this is the Stunning Thank You. It's quite a substantial die and again you've got a matte and then you've got the sentiment and with these types of sentiments I do like to cut out two or three copies of it and then I stick them one upon the other to give the sentiment a little bit of dimension. Again I've cut out the B from the front cover and added some random honeycomb die cuts. So to have a hunt around in your stash and see what you can use that will work well with these collections. Again, this is another die. I think this is a creative expressions die. And this time the hives themselves became the focal point. So I decoupaged a few layers of these. I think you can see that I stuck them on with mini sticky pads. And to give them this shine, I've added some glossy accents. You do have to give it time to dry, but I do think that it adds to the effect. I tried heat embossing the bees this time with some golden embossing powder. They stamp out really, really well. I think you can see the shine and the dimension on that card. There we go. What I've done this time is I've taken that stunning black golden honeycomb paper and I cut it out several times and I layered it between a rose gold miri card frame and then right in the centre we've got another little honey bee. The idea for my final card was a Mother's Day card and this is a concertina type card that when you open it it reads Happy Mother's Day. And then when you lay it out, you can lay it out as a banner or as a concertina card. This is the project that I would like to share with you today. Last year I made a concertina card using the Cottage Garden collection. And I know that I've had a couple of messages on my YouTube channel as to how I made it. This is based upon that design, but I've actually turned this into a DL size card. I started off with a piece of A3 paper and I discovered that it measures 42 centimetres by 30 centimetres so in order to cut it down I first of all scored it at 21 centimetres then I folded it in half because this is going to make it easier for me to cut because that's the size my guillotine will fit and then I scored it at 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters then all I did was 
uh, used my paper trimmer and cut down these fold lines so you want it to be band going lengthways down your A3 piece of paper. If you haven't got um, card this size you can adapt this to using any size of card blank so the cottage garden one used uh, six by six card blanks these are your standard tent cards and if you take three of them and stick them like so so that you've got an M let me move the scoreboard there you go and stick them like an M so you're going to glue this side here and glue this side here to stick them together you'll get the same result and then in that way you can make any size card that you like on to the card that I am constructing today this is the paper that I've cut down with those bands and there's my M and then what you'll find you'll have is a DL card which are very popular at the moment so then I took my slimline dies and I cut myself some panels so I've got panels of the paper that I have die cut down and then I have stuck it onto grey card and this will be the base of this DL fold card that we're going to make so I'll very quickly take all the sticky tape off and I will back the eight panels yep yeah, eight panels so I'm going to cover both sides um, and then I will decorate it to make a very personalized Mother's Day card. Mm. Next thing that I did was to take some die cut letters now these were an unbranded set that I got from the eBay or something like that and they measure they're quite big ones they are round about two inches high and about yeah two inches high two inches wide and they are really good for um, adding bold sentiments to your project so what I do is I line them up and then I take a piece of tape, this is a reusable scotch tape, um, and then I run that through my die cutting machine two or three times because I like to use two or three layers of letters. So I take this, run it through, get my next piece of card and run it through again. So I don't need to keep moving the letters and then any surplus ones that I have I can then um, keep for another project. The other thing to bear in mind is that if you want to lay your letters so that they are straight along your card, then you can use something like a T ruler and buck them up as you lay them out. You can also use the waste from your die cutting and lay this out so that you know the lines are straight and then stick your letters into the waist. For this particular card, I want my letters to be wibbly wobbly along the card. So again, I take my reusable tape and I place the letters where I want them to be with the tape before I start sticking so this is a very long sentiment so we're going to say happy mother's day and I know that it will look different once the folds bend up but you can use this as a banner piece of bunting but you can also fold it up and send it as a card in the post so there's our happy mother's day And then once I'm happy that all my letters are in the right place, I will then begin sticking. Now 
when I'm happy that all the letters are dry, I then take my tweezers and very gently lift off the removable tape and save it for another project because this scotch tape you can use over and over again. It's well worth having in your craft stash for making little tasks like this easier. There we go. And once we fold it up, we've got a Happy Mother's Day card that will sit on your mum's shelf or mantelpiece, like so. Because we are working with the bees, I'm also going to add a few bees. So these are die cut from the paper. The black and the gold works particularly well. So here you go, here's our finished card. When you open it up, it reads Happy Mother's Day. And then you open up the back and you can add your own words or pictures or anything that you choose. I think you all agree with me that the Tell the Bees Special Edition is an incredible piece of artwork. I quickly want to mention before I leave you that I have decided that these papers are predominantly black. At the beginning, I thought that they were a navy blue, but as I've come to work with them, I don't know whether it's my lighting or whatever it is, but it's definitely black. However, when you add blue to it, it does seem to pick up the colours. So there are little hints of blue in here, and that just gives this black background a subtlety that really you have to see it to believe it. Here are all my finished cards. I will pop these in the post and send to the team at Craft Consortium. Hopefully you'll get to see them on social media and on Create and Craft TV at some point in the next few weeks. Please let me know what you think of this collection. I think it's a fantastic start to the crafting year. And if you would like to see more of the cards that I make, then please do like this video so that YouTube know that you're interested in looking at my work. I would love it if you could also subscribe and follow me across social media at Elizabeth Hogarth Designs. If you would like to see how I make any more of these cards, then please do leave a comment below.